over the next uh, talks in this short course, we will walk our way towards a mid infrared mission. So we'll go through uh, the different types of, uh, of observable from the ground and then from space and then go into the life mission specifics. So the next talk is going to be by Dimitri Mawed about what we can expect to do from the ground in terms of rocky exoplanet characterization. All right, so um, I've been asked to put together a few slides on, on this topic and uh, oh, yes. I've been asked to put a few slides on this topic. What can we do from the ground with ELTs as far as rocky exoplanet science is concerned? And I only have two slides. This is the last one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> But it's indeed going to be very hard uh, from the ground for uh, several reasons that I, I will try to cover. Um, but there, there's a bit of hope. So I think there are three main thrusts. Uh, the first one I'll talk about is uh, transit or closing exoplanet spectroscopy at very high spectral resolution in the optical and the infrared. And then there's direct imaging in the thermal and infrared, which actually may come first with the ELT METIS instrument. And then finally, direct imaging in reflected light, uh, which I think is a long ways away. Uh, so in my opinion, even though it's not my uh, field of expertise, um, I think the, the most likely to succeed is in this endeavor in the short term, at least, is high resolution transit spectroscopy. There's been a lot of amazing, I would say, mind-blowing results over the past few years uh, coming out of the VLT and other instruments. And the main reason being that uh, at very high spectral resolution, the information content of uh, molecules is fully unlocked. And this is here a well-known result from uh, Jane Bergby uh, showing the water molecule and the carbon monoxide molecule at various resolving powers. You clearly see that the higher the resolution up to a certain point, of course, uh, the more information can be extracted from the spectra. Um, there's been uh, a series of studies uh, in recent years about uh, the oxygen uh, A-band uh, by uh, Mercedes Lopez Morales in particular, uh, arguing for even higher resolutions, so exceeding the typical of 100,000 uh, resolving power. And you can see here for a reflected light um, exoplanets uh, in orbit around M-type stars that you know, there is a case to be made about extremely high spectral resolutions where you see the line depth increasing and saturating around 300,000 or so. So unlocking the information content at very high spectral resolution is one uh, facet of the uh, benefits of high resolution spectroscopy. But the other one is, uh, in particular for closing exoplanets, is that uh, as the planet orbits around the star on very short periods, it spans um, several kilometers per second in velocity space, uh, which can be used to disentangle the effects of uh, the star and also the telluric lines in the Earth atmosphere. So that's uh, one of the reasons why this technique has been so successful, digging out signals at the 10 minus four even sometimes 10 minus 5 level in the stellar photon noise uh, is because of, of this uh, ability to, to use the velocity shifts uh, that are resolved at very high spectral resolution. So when folks from the direct detection community saw, saw these results, they thought they could apply the same kind of gains on direct image or informatory image uh, planets, but Actually, it's forgetting the fact that uh, the, the closing uh, or transit spectroscopists use this uh, velocity shifts, which are changing over the course of a few hours to actually help with disentangling the signals from the star and the, and the planet. So um, for uh, our own instrument, MODIS on the TMT, we made a series of simulations that were based on um, our exposure time calculator and the work of uh, our team member Bjorn Benicki at the University of Montreal. And he essentially paved uh, this uh, SNR of water detection per transit versus uh, planet radius. Um, and this is all the uh, known uh, transiting or closing systems. 
Again, here I'm always using transit and closing because the planet does actually need to transit the star to be able to, to see it with this technique. And in the square box, this is the realm of supposedly rocky planets. And you see that a single transit with a 30 meter class telescope, uh, you can actually detect uh, water pretty confidently. Um, of course, these results apply not just to our instrument on TMT, but also to the equivalent on the ELT, in particular the Andes project, uh, which now I think has been approved for the ELT as a generation 1.5 instrument or second generation instrument. Uh, and also on the GMT, there are two instruments uh, that uh, are going to very high spectral resolution. There is the GMT NEARS in the near infrared and GCLEF in the, uh, in the optical. So this is the, uh, the work by Mercedes uh, Lopez Morales. I think the context is GCLEF for uh, the, the GMT, but also arguing for higher resolution modes for, for this instrument or another instrument, showing that uh, the detection of, oxy of oxygen may be possible but you see here the number of transits uh, that uh, may be required to, to do this detection is extremely high. Uh, and it varies depending on the exact uh, band of oxygen you're considering and the type of noise you're injecting in your simulations. So nevertheless, uh, I think this is a pretty exciting uh, prospect, but you see that it's gonna take a lot of effort and a lot of telescope time to actually get uh, you know, a three sigma detection. So. Hence my second slide, it's going to be very hard even with this uh, promising technique. So water I think is gonna be rather straightforward, but other biosignatures I think will be extremely hard from the ground with this technique. So then uh, we have experts in the room. So if I say anything stupid, uh, please correct me. Uh, I think the next one is um, uh, the thermal infrared uh, by uh, chances of happening soon. Uh, because I think ELT METIS is on track to be on the telescope uh, around 2020 yet. Uh, I think more realistically around 2030 or so. Um, but this is a very exciting capability and I think the only one out of the three ELTs that is going to push in the mid infrared. Um, so th there is a chance that they actually may see one or two rocky planets. Uh, it's, I think it's gonna be for sure less than five uh, but I think a very exciting prospect nonetheless. Uh, this is the most recent result on, on this instrument simulation uh, by uh, Bowen et al. I think revising some of the results that Sasha published a few years ago. And then we're going into uh, uh, the, the crazy stuff. Um, well, crazy not because it's not without merit, but because it's I think going to be even harder which is reflected light high contrast imaging uh, using second or third generation instruments on the ELTs, uh, going after reflected light of uh, small planets around M-type stars. Uh, so there are two, um, two set of studies, uh, one in Europe for the ELT planetary camera and spectrograph uh, instrument concept which uses a combination of extreme adaptive optics, coronagraphy, and high resolution spectroscopy. Uh, this is pulled out of the Messenger paper by Marcus Casper. Uh, and you see here the contrast predictions are uh, extremely optimistic in my opinion. Uh, I don't think they are unrealistic, but it's going to take a lot of work and breakthroughs in adaptive optics to reach those regimes. Uh, also, the assumptions about the gains that we can get at high spectral resolution for directly imaged planets, I think, are over optimistic in, in this work. Uh, but they predict, I, I mean, to be fair, I should mention what they predict. They predict a fairly high number of Earth like planets detected and, and characterized with this instrument. But again, I think those, the assumptions that we're, that we're using here are pretty, pretty optimistic. Um, and the same goes for uh, the, the competition overseas on, on GMT with GMAGOX and, and TMT PSI. Uh, those two teams work pretty closely. I'm, I'm part of, of, of that team as well. Um, and of course, we, you know, we want to see what's possible you know, without breaking the laws of physics. But these, these numbers here and, and predictions are, I think, are also very optimistic. Um, and so, um, it's not to say that I'm not excited about uh, 
extremely large ground-based telescopes. I think there's going to be a lot of great science uh, in, in exoplanet science. Uh, but getting down into the rocky uh, planet regime, I think it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of efforts. And as, uh, as a lesson learned from the previous generation of, of uh, ground-based telescopes, it's going to take uh, probably a decade or so before we actually understand uh, the atmosphere, how the telescopes behave, and how to push the machines uh, to extreme limits to, to achieve these goals. So my best guess phasing uh, for what's going to happen is I think the first opportunity will be with uh, the ELT METIS in the thermal infrared around 2030 or so. Uh, this, this instrument is on track, the telescope seems to be on track as well. Uh, it's going to be the first extremely large telescope that we see the light. Um, in the US, I think it's going to take a few more years before we actually see a, a giant ground-based telescope. But uh, in my opinion, the next best opportunity will be with these high-res uh, optical infrared spectrographs. There are many that are planned, ELT Andes, GCLEF, uh, TMT, GMT NERS, and, and TMT MODIS. Uh, but I think those won't, won't see the light before 2035 or so. And then the next uh, uh, big push, which will require a lot of breakthroughs in adaptive optics and coronagraphy, will be reflected light. But I don't see that happening before 2040, to be realistic. So here, I want to be extremely realistic. I, I'm not giving this kind of talk to every audience. But um, this is my, my current assessment of the state of the field and the next opportunities with uh, giant ground-based telescopes. And please correct me if I'm wrong. I know there are lots of people involved in METIS and other instruments here. But I try to give, give a honest view of, of the state of the art. And, prospects for the future.